Hello everyone, welcome to the standalone game maker tutorial. And as uh, highly requested, I'm doing a title screen and menu system tutorial. Uh, but before we start, let's take a look at the finished product. Well, it's nothing too fancy, I mean it's just a little mock-up. But you can move down, you can move up, you can select things. Of course it, w it won't load a real game because I'm not coding an entire game but you can easily do that and quit alright so that's what we are going to do let's uh, start by adding some sprites first sprite logo this is just your logo uh, some game or something um, yeah you can use any logo you want this is just a little test I made in a few minutes I mean you can make it all fancy or you can have plain text whatever as long as it's a logo or it doesn't even need to be a logo just an image and I'm gonna center it for convenience for placing it inside the room and we also need sprite arrow which is the white error arrow um, on the left of the text so let's make it 16 by 16 pixels and just draw the arrow it's really easy actually just place it there there and we've got an arrow just make it white and that's all as for the origin center it the Y should just be in the center but the X should be at the width so that the origin is on the right it's uh, not necessary but it's most convenient when placing it on the left of text so that's the only sprites we will need furthermore we will need a font let's just name it font font and Arial will do size 10 alright that's uh, all we will need and we will create an object called object logo with the sprite of the logo of course and this is the only object in the entire tutorial so it's not really complicated even if it may seem so and for the room well gonna change the snap and uh, this is uh, not really necessary I'm just going to adjust settings to what I want but you can also make this uh, room very big or very small yeah everything is possible uh, anyway let's call it room title screen and I'm going to use 320 by 240 pixels but you can also make it smaller or bigger and 60 fps because why not so place the logo uh, in a room something like this and a gray background with a gray logo is not so pleasant to the eye so I'm just gonna make it a shade of purple like that so let's go into the object of course this is the hardest part but it's still not so bad in create event we are going to add a few variables first variable called option equals zero this is the option we are currently uh, have the arrow so uh, basically you have a few options on the menu like new game load game and quit and those are listed in a number new game is zero load game is one quit is two for me at least you can change the order um, but yeah this variable will say what we are on and then max option equals true equals two um, this is the highest number of the option we can uh, we have and when it exceeds that number uh, we place it at the top again so um, we have three options but because zero also counts uh, it will be two and not three so if you want to have seven options you can say max option equals six something like that you can adjust this number to whatever 
amount of options you want. Alright, so um, and first we are going to say underscore x equals 50. Now this will be the x the text the left side of the text is drawn at. For me that's 50 but you can also increase it or decrease it depending on where you want the text to be. And now y uh, underscore y zeros this is an array uh, equals well, let's say 150. So this is the uh, y where the first option well, the, uh, option 0 actually so for us new game uh, will be drawn at and same goes for underscore y1 equals 150 plus well I'm gonna say 29 29 uh, where this number can also be changed it's just the uh, uh, yeah the the space between the text and y2 will then unsurprisingly be uh, 150 plus 29 times 2. I'm too lazy to calculate that, but GameMaker is doing that for us. Now, text 0 equals new game. So our first option will display new game. Text 1 equals load game. So our second option will uh, display load game and text 2 equals quit. So our third option will display quit. And I think that's all we need. Now for the step event. We basically want if uh, the up arrow is pressed we want to move one option up and when the down arrow is pressed we want to move uh, one option to the bottom. That's pretty self-explanatory. So if keyboard check pressed Pick it down, so if the down arrow key is pressed, option plus equals 1. So increase the option by 1. So if you are a new game, we will go to load game, etc. Else, if keyboard check pressed, VK up, so if the up arrow is pressed, option minus equals 1. So if we are a load game, we will go to new game, etc. Now, uh, if the option uh, exceeds, uh, well the maximum option or it goes below zero we want it to uh, go to the upside uh, opposite side so if we are at quit and we press down we want it to go to new game so how we go that is if option is smaller than zero option equals max option so the biggest uh, option we have so the um, the option on the far bottom else if option exceeds max option option equals zero and that's all we will come to, uh, back to the step event later but for now let's go to the draw event first say draw self so that it will draw the logo uh, because that's the sprite we have and um, now here, draw arrow. Let's draw the arrow down. And uh, draw sprite. Um, sprite arrow. Sub image arrow because it only has one frame. And we draw it at underscore x. So the uh, far left of the text. Minus 4. This is basically the distance between the arrow and the text. You can change it to 10. You can change it to 1. Whatever you want and uh, underscore y option so the y posi position of the current option then draw text first we set the font to uh, our font so draw set font 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 and uh, yeah we also set the uh, vertical align to um, the middle so that the text uh, y origin will be in the middle 
Um, uh, for now, uh, let's add a temporary variable called i, so var i, and i equals 0. Now, while i is smaller or equal to um, max option, draw a text underscore x underscore y i and text y. So basically what this says is for every i, well that's just a number that will oh wait here i plus equals one okay so i starts to zero so at new game uh, if the y uh, is still uh, an option we have so if it is smaller or equal to uh, the maximum option we will draw uh, the text of i i will indicate the uh, option we are drawing so the text of that option will draw at the x and the y of that option then y plus equals 1 so that it goes to the next option. Alright. Now this should uh, already work. Yeah. So I do think this could be set to 12. But yeah, we can already cycle to uh, through uh, the options we can't select them yet, but we can cycle through them, and you will see that if we press up at new game, we will immediately go to quit and vice versa. So now, just all we have to do is make them selectable. Uh, let's say it's, uh, the space bar is the uh, key we want to select them. You can also change it to enter or whatever key you like, but I'm gonna use the space bar. So if keyboard check pressed VK, sp VK VK space switch option K0 so if option uh, if the option is equal to 0 uh, do whatever is here and uh, if the option 0 is new game but I'm not going to program an entire game just for showing a title screen. So I'm just gonna show a message saying you started the new game. So show message using the default game maker uh, message system. It's not recommended but uh, for a real game it's not recommended but this is just a tutorial so I'm not going to do anything fancy. So show message um, you started a new game. And if it if it is one option is one, so load game. So show message. You loaded the game. And if option is uh, two, so quit. We can actually code that just by saying game end. Then it will quit the game. Now you can see if we press the spacebar, you started a new game, you let it game, and we quit. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. Anyway, see you next time.